Hey folks, Craig Levada here with the Houston Museum of Natural Science. Today I am going to introduce to you James E. Washington III. He is one of our all-star discovery guides here at the museum. And today I'm going to get the Jurassic James experience here at the museum. James, what is your favorite hall to walk people through? Given my background in paleontology, I have to say paleontology. <laughs> You're a dinosaur guy. Dinosaur guy, Jurassic yes. James. That hence the name, yes. Let's go check out the dinosaurs. Now, James, how did you get your start here at the museum? I started as a ticket taker, and then the concierge program was created. So okay. I was in that first generation of those guys and became a discovery guide and on from there to a manager. And of course, the senior, customer service senior lead. And then you just got really good at your job. Uh, people say that, yes. <laughs> So you've been through a lot of changes here at the museum just in eight years. Yes, I've seen Paleo Hall open Egypt twice, all those halls. Really exciting every time. The new hall is like, yes, you know? New things to learn, new things to teach. Exactly. Now, James, what sort of education do you need to be a discovery guide here at the museum? Basically, uh, it's, not, it's not a degree requirement. It's your knowledge base and skills, but it helps you with a degree too. I have my background in uh, earth science, geology, and paleontology. I went to Lone Star College before, then UHD downtown, and got my, my first degree, two degrees there. And then of course I'm trying to get into a PhD program now because paleontology is my passion. James, what are some of your favorite things to teach our patrons about? Well, primarily that it's not so much the halls themselves, but the idea that everyone's actually born a scientist, but we forget middle school. You get all these kind of pressures and things, and you're like, no, no, all science is asking questions. How do you know that? And when I give a tour and, and someone says something, well, how do you know that? I'm like, yes, here's the answer. I tell them, if I don't give you the answer you want, ask me again, because a good science person can explain how we know that. That's what science is about. It's not just taking my word for it, because if I just give you my word, you go, okay, it's true, Dr. James said so, I'm not a good science teacher. But if you, hey, well, how do you know that, and you push me to the edge of my knowledge, that's when I know you're doing a good job. And that's what really makes me you, you know, fired up on the inside, like, yes, ask more questions, I love that kind of stuff. I can just talk to you all day, I can lecture all day, but to actually say, how do you know that? And say, oh, here's who found this, here's how it's published, here's how the evidence that supports it, that's a fun thing for me. And I love when our guests get that too, and they, they light up, like, they, like they, they really light up, it's really fun. Now you actually do hire discovery guides here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. These people are getting a free Jurassic James class. How did you get the name Jurassic James? In high school. Uh, in they, high school? Yes, I was in JRTC and I was the operations officer. Okay. So we needed a PT name, so they're like Jurassic James. And I was like, oh, sure, and it just stuck, basically. <laughs> yeah. So your name is Jurassic James. Yes. But that's not even your favorite period. It's actually Cretaceous. There's more dinosaurs from the Cretaceous than the Jurassic. That's a longer time. So your name should be Cretaceous James. Yeah, technically, yes. But Jurassic stuck in high school, and I can call you Cretaceous Craig. There we go. There we go, yeah. Now, the Paleo Hall is your first love. Yes. You're about to show me your second love here. Yes, the Jim's Mineral Hall, because minerals still in fossils. It's connected. It's all connected. It's all connected, yes. All right, now we're inside the Cullen Hall of Gems and Minerals. This is one of your favorite halls, besides Paleo Hall. Of course, yes. Uh, why? Because it's like Aladdin's Cave of Wonders. I mean, you come in here and you have all these crystals displayed one by one, cool information, and they're naturally occurring. That's really amazing to me. You can't go anywhere in the world and see this kind of collection like this in one spot. Tell me why you love that thing so much. So Galena isn't like the prettiest mineral, like a crystal, but it actually forms in a cube naturally. It's 86% lead, 30% sulfur, almost percent silver. It forms in that cube like that. You hit it with a hammer, it breaks into smaller cubes. If you saw James Cameron's avatar, the actual prop for the mineral they're using is called unitanium. It was Galena. And of course, for a Transformers fans, before time began, there was the cube. Oh my, okay, say my name in the Optimus Prime voice. Craig Labati. Now we have a lot of Game of Thrones fans out there. This Stib Knight looks a lot like the Iron Throne. Yes, it does. Or if you remember the, the film Armageddon, the my, meteorite, basically. Here it is in front of you. We have it here. Don't want to close my eyes. Yeah, you shouldn't sing, James. But people like my sing sometimes. <laughs> now, how rewarding is this job? I like when people walk out of here with a new appreciation of the world around them. They can now see something and appreciate it on a different, deeper level than just like, that's a mineral, <laughs> that's a rock. What is your favorite age group to work with? When we're working with kids, everything's new to them. So you're explaining like, when you travel to this place, you'll see this. When you go here, you'll see that. And their minds leaves you more open to learning everything, basically. Like, here's what's going on, appreciate it. One of the things I like about the Gem and Mineral Hall is that this stuff took so long to be created. Yes. And actually, not only created, found, and brought here. <laughs> Something people often don't understand that. I mean, you go anywhere in the world, you, this had to form in that one lava flow that one time, or this had to flow in, form in this evaporating sea this one time, just this one way. Which is why the localities are so important on the labels. 
So basically, it's something like this blue tourmaline. We have many other tourmalines, but this one is really rare. It's that I read about blue tourmaline before I worked here, but until I saw this one sample, I didn't believe it existed. <laughs> So it's what's the big deal, there's others like it, but this one formed in that one cave that one time. And that's why we appreciate it so much. But there's other blue tourmalines, but not like this one right here. And, and of course, the same story for every mineral in our hall, actually. They're all the most unique of their type. It's a really pretty rock. Technically, tourmaline's a mineral because minerals make rocks. Yeah. When you were a kid, what sort of sci-fi got you into science? Uh, Jurassic Park, hands down. That movie maybe changed from a, a boyhood light into an actual research thing. It was a pivotal moment in my life. And many scientists will say they watched some sci-fi movie or something, and they said, oh, I saw that, now I'm gonna make that happen, basically. So is it really exciting to you, I guess, to see kids just like you, sort of growing up, coming here, and then they realize that, oh, I'm a, I wanna be a scientist one day? Yeah, that's the goal, it's the mission to get people excited about science, to, to ask questions, to wonder why, to learn more, and use the museum as a medium to explain that. Hey everybody, it's the Siren of Serendip. Uh, it's very pretty and very heavy. James is better at this. The Discovery Guide program is pretty unique to the Houston Museum of Natural Science. Yes, we're the first one and only one in the city. Plus, every tour guide has different backgrounds. Some are archaeologists, some are historians, some have chemists, geologists. So we kind of meld these together. So you're kind of like the Avengers, like the, but for science. The science Avengers. I love that. <laughs> now, you train new discovery guides. What are some of the tips and tricks you give to them? Uh, to have fun. The idea is if you're enjoying it, uh, the guests will enjoy it too. Many museums have scripts they have to go by, and we're like, no, just go out the facts and tell us what you want to tell it, basically. Uh, my first time in here, I was reviewing the hall, and a lady was standing in front of our, our snake here. She was filming me as it rattled. And I said, oh my God, how did that snake get in here? Everyone, get out of here. And she's like, what? I'm, like, I'm just kidding, it's a robot. And she was like, oh, okay, that's really funny. I'm like, great, because it could have been bad. So. Because you, you also, part of your job as well is creating memories of this place. Yes, yes. I had a lady last, on my tour last week, she was like, my daughter's taking a science class because of you. And I was like, oh, like that. I was like, oh. <laughs> A little tear. No, pull it back in, right work. Um, but yeah, so that's the idea. She won't forget that event where the snake almost like attached to the museum. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Nope. <laughs> no, it's really good. It's like, <laughs> they'll never forget the fact that a robot snake almost bit him. Yes, yes. As a Houston native, do you remember your first visit ever to the Houston Museum of Natural Science? Yes, it was back in the museum with the zoo. It was in the 40s, <laughs> and it was black and white. So it was like third grade. I remember we were going to the museum for a field trip, and I remember all my friends were happy for me. They were like, James, we're going to the Downstream Museum. Isn't that great for you? And I was happy too, but they were like, but James, for you. <laughs> and we were walking through this, you know, in lines and everything. And they are like, James, are you enjoying this? The kids weren't appreciating themselves. They were like, are you having a great time? How do you feel about that? And I remember that was a very impactful thing for me. Like, huh, okay. So they went on a field trip with you. Yes, that were like, what do you feel about that dinosaur right there? Tell us about it real quick. And I'm like, yeah, it's just Akisaposaurus, you know, or Stegosaurus sometimes. So I just, that was really interesting that they were so happy for me to be there. <laughs> These are ducks, and they quack a lot. So our entire team's goal is that when a guest comes to our doors, they leave with a memory, a great experience, and a fish the world around them. That's the whole focus, that's the whole mission that we have here. 